Hello questers, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about this Oculus Link work as when I heard this news I was sad because I just bought my Rift S because I couldn't play PC VR on my Quest very well only to hear that in November this would no longer be the case. I feel like I just wasted £400 so I tried finding a way to make myself feel better for that purchase. So, <coughs> go back. So let's talk about exactly what is going on with this link and what we can expect if we plan on getting it. So first of all, the Oculus Link is the name for the compatibility of the Quest coming November, where you can connect your Quest to a PC via USB-C connection to create a tethered PC VR headset. Apparently this was the plan from Oculus all along, but the technology was just not ready as the current operation of the system needed optimization in order to utilize USB-C for high-end fidelity graphics and data throughput, as it's important for great visuals and low latency for an enjoyable experience because during development they experienced pixelation and delays in tracking whilst trying to make this happen. But that to me still doesn't explain why they didn't tell us about this OC5 or F8. That was sneaky Facebook, a bad move on their part because they knew it would damage their sales but they kept quiet. USB-C is capable of up to 5 gigabit per second, which is around 600 megabytes per second. That's pretty fast. But when gaming, you are sending more than just graphical processing, you are sending tracking data as well, which VR has a ton of. So if you are going to buy a USB-C wire, please, please ensure you have the best speed possible. Otherwise, you could come home and it might not be compatible. It's likely it won't charge your device whilst playing either, which is why Facebook is selling a top of the range cable that can play and charge your device for $79, which my jaw dropped. That's a lot of money for a wire. But then you have to weigh up, am I paying $399 for a new PC VR headset or $79 for an amazing fiber optic cable? The wire is also going to be five meters long, so there's plenty of room for you to play around with. Now let's talk about how this is actually going to work. It doesn't use the headset as a true native virtual reality headset. It acts as a client. This server is feeding data to and from the PC to emulate a headset. So all the visuals that you see is actually being streamed to your quest. Straight out of the gate, Facebook have said this is not a one-to-one -one scale of the graphical representation on your PC due to the process of feeding it to your headset. As to provide the headset with visual data, a few phases have to occur. The images have to be rendered via the PC. They then have to be encoded and then compressed and sent to the Quest, where it's to be decoded by a mobile decoder as the Quest is a mobile chipset and presented to the user. This task with high fidelity visuals with minimal latency is pretty tough. This is why this has to be achieved with a foveated rendering styled compression to reduce the amount of information sent to the Quest. So on the PC side, the image is rendered and what Oculus will do is it will foveate these visuals. So around the border where you don't normally see as well, it will reduce the scale of this resolution. This will reduce the workload on the PC side when this is sent to the Quest. The image that's then been compressed and foveated is rescaled and stretched on the Quest side. So the image you see will never actually be as good as what's on the PC VR side. It's always downgraded and foveated. To further reduce latency in this process, the images are sent in packets and then back together again like sending a LEGO model one piece at a time. This is what they call sliced image transfer. Each frame is deconstructed into strips and these are sent one by one and put back together on the Quest side. This reduces latency and improves performance. So it does seem that the Oculus Link is utilizing the Quest's dedicated hardware to enable this client and server to integrate with minimal latency. But this does sound like it's prone to screen tearing where sometimes you can get a loss in frame and you see a black section. Or perhaps frames are skipped due to corruption, but you may not see it because it is running at like 72 hertz refresh rate, which is pretty fast. But this is how they've managed to reduce latency as they can start loading frames before the final part of the frame has even been sent. I mean, the encoders and decoders can act quickly and we can provide information to the users in the fastest way possible because latency is a VR killer. Amazing thing about this though is you are able to access Steam VR library via the Oculus Link, the same way you can now via the Rift, opening up the possibilities and your library tenfold. That was the biggest question I have when I heard this was, is it going to be limited to the Oculus exclusives or are we going to have access to Steam VR and Viveport? So that's my insight into this Oculus Link to provide some of you Rift owners with some potential comfort. Also for the Quest owners to actually know what they're getting into because Facebook have been quiet about a few things. I do also think that using your own cable may not work so well. So I do recommend checking out Facebook's if you get the chance. But of course, try your own first. 
So thanks for watching. Steve knows. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.